Boom, boom, boom. Spin some wheels for just a second here. Green check marks all across the board. And away we go. What is up, Broncos country? It is Wednesday night, which means it's time for MHI. And joining with me, a very special guest. You know him from co-hosting Saturday's OBV with Ron White every 6 p.m. Mountain Saturday night. He's the one, the only, our very own DVA, Dylan Von Arks. Dylan, filling in for Tom. Thank you so much, man. Pumped to have you on the show. Yeah, happy to be here, man. And uh, talk quarterbacks until, you know, our heads are spinning because that's going to be the only topic until we get one. Or if we don't get one, we'll be screaming about what random backup we're going to get. You know, that's just it, man. It's the time. It's the season of lies. We're talking quarterbacks. We're talking a first round quarterback prospect in Denver yesterday, all day with coach Payton, George Payton at Denver HQ. We'll get into all that and more Uh busy day around the NFL too. We started talking about that before the show blockbuster trade uh, and Stefan Diggs, no longer a Buffalo bill. We will get you caught up. But before we do, let's say what's up to some of the folks in the chat. And Dylan, I'm going to say what's up to you right away. You're usually the first, second one in. But uh, Thomas is on the road. He just closed the big sale. And we are wishing him safe travels as he relocates somewhere in Broncos country. Uh, but let's say hello to some of the folks. Garden coming in with, yeah, he met with Las Vegas today. He being a Michael Penix Jr., Washington quarterback, was in Denver yesterday. The quarterbacks continue to make the rounds. Dylan, is this a procedural thing, or do we really think where there's smoke, there could be fire? Oh, man, I, I think it's due diligence just because uh, all we have is Jared Stidham and – uh, Gucci Danucci, and <laughs> it's just we it, he has to absolutely look at every quarterback prospect. And Sean Payton wants to make sure he gets the guy that he wants, and whether yep. he's able to get them or not, you know, trade up, trade down. We heard everything under the sun. Uh, he's he's got to look at everyone and find which one might be the perfect fit for him, whether that's a Penix, a Nix, a May, a JJ, whomever. Yeah. Yeah, whoever's the guy, they need to be willing to scour the earth, right? They got to turn over every rock and stone. I mean, we thought John Elway and Matt Russell were doing it. Sorry, it didn't work out. George Payton hasn't worked out. Sean Payton, we're fixing to find out, as Gary Kubiak once said. DTR coming in with a very generous $10 super. Thank you for starting off the show before we even kicked off. If Joe Burrow is an example of a college quarterback who had an injury history and was still drafted at a premium spot, should a team expect Michael Penix Jr. to have more injuries in the league in a similar fashion? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's hard to say. I, I know his medicals came up clear uh, at the Combine, but he wasn't getting popped very much there at Washington. They had a pretty good offensive line. and Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yet we, we've seen the injuries follow Joe Burrow uh, into the NFL. Obviously, he had a very prolific season uh, there at LSU and uh, threw him to the number one pick in the draft. Uh, you won't see Penix up there, but he is definitely a very talented quarterback. And it, it, it's hard to say if those injuries will creep back up once he's behind an offensive line that might be a little shakier, even though the Broncos did have a, a solid offensive line besides you know, the quarterback holding the ball maybe a little too long, as Sean Payton alluded to. Right. No, that's just it, man. Well, it's just one of these things where, DTR, I see where you're going. And you're right to think that. I mean, there have been quarterbacks coming out of college with injury history that have bucked that trend and have had successful careers. Now, they're far and few in between, but Joey B, when he was coming out of LSU – he was touted as one of the best college quarterbacks of all time. And you look at his resume, and just like you said, Dylan, a lot like Michael Penix Jr. with Washington, stacked team, right? Gets to play with his teammate from LSU over in Cincinnati still to this day. I mean, stacked, was protected a little bit more. But the injuries, man, DTR is exactly right. We got to talk about the injuries when it comes to Michael Penix Jr. It's one of the reasons why I've got concerns. I mean, one of my biggest concerns outside of the two ACL tears in his right knee two ACL tears right Bradley Chubb thinks that sounds bad uh then we had two surgeries on each shoulder 
Man, we spend all our time in the operating room if you're Michael Penix Jr. However, it was impressive when you look at what he did with Washington. 9,500 passing yards, what, upwards of 67 touchdowns throwing off the top of my head. He's a good, solid quarterback. He's a first-round talent. I don't know that I have a first-round grade on him, but he's a lefty. He's a lefty, Dylan. I have a problem with left-handed quarterbacks, and I hope my daughter's not listening. She's a lefty, right? <laughs> but left-handed quarterbacks, I can't think of one in the league right now that's doing really, really well. Yeah, the only one I'd put out there is Tua, but that's mostly in September. <laughs> you know, uh, once you get to the playoffs, it's it's a different story. Uh, injuries too, right? Another left-handed injury-ridden old man and you're right dylan i have to give Tua his flowers Tua and mike mcdaniel did some special stuff last year but when you look at this dolphins team now they're kind of stripped right stripped to the studs they've got some cap issues and they've been trying to rebuild and it's just it's tough for me to go there with michael Penix. i've been trying to make a pros and a cons column since december with this guy and it just feel like the cons always outweigh the pro for me. There have been some rumblings, right? Cecil Lammy came onto the show a couple months ago when he was at the Senior Bowl, told us there might be some work ethic concerns. That's the rumor in the scouting community, at least. Maybe he needs to get in the weight room. It, it's the season of lies, Dylan. What the hell am I supposed to believe? It's, it's hard to know what. Everyone's got an opinion, and it's just you, everyone's biased as well. And obviously we are, but at least we're up front with it. You know, <laughs> um, but yeah, he's he's got some detractors from. I mean, obviously, you talk about the injuries, the age. Yeah, he's a little older. That's I'm not terribly concerned about that. It's it's more for me his ability out of the pocket. He's not. He doesn't really have much there, and that that kind of worries me, especially if uh, Mike McGlinchey can't stay on the field, or you know, he whiffs a block mm. like he he tends to do time to time. Oh, yeah, Mike McGlinchey, man, that was a frustrating, expensive free agent fix. At least that's what they thought it was going to be a right tackle. That remains to be seen. Kathy Lund, what's up, Kathy? Saying what's up to Dylan and I here on MHI, where you can catch us every Wednesday night. Dylan, pinch hitting for me. But if you didn't get enough of Dylan, head on over to milehighhuddle.com. Dylan's got an article up right now. Broncos versus Steelers. Will it be the Russell revenge game? Again, head on over to milehighhuddle.com. I've also got an article up right now. Uh, NFL Network experts say that the Broncos have the worst quarterback situation in all of the NFL. They are the team that needs to trade up the most. Head on over to MHH.com and read all about it. We would also appreciate a follow with this pod at MHI underscore pod. And if you don't get enough of Dylan on tonight's MHI, be sure to head on over Saturday night, 6 p.m. OBV, DVA, Ron White, bringing you Broncos primetime Saturday night action. Ernie Mays firing away. Hello, Dylan. Hello, Luke. Hello, Scott. Go Broncos country quarterback and more. William James Baker, our guy from across the pond. Russell, we wish you the best. Sorry it didn't work out, but Broncos for the win. Yeah, I'm I don't I don't wish him the best, Dylan. I really don't. I told <laughs> Thomas as much last week. Like, I don't want Russell to do well because I'm going to be wondering, why didn't you do well here? You can't blame Sean Payton. He resurrected something. You're the reason. Sean Payton's the reason he has a chance somewhere in Pittsburgh right now. That and George Payton's decision with that contract. But look, man, I want the Broncos to just annihilate Russell Wilson. However... There is that chance, and it's happened before, where the Broncos have been embarrassed at home. Dylan, there's no way Russell Wilson embarrasses the Broncos in front of Broncos country. I would hope not, and it, it depends <laughs> on when, when in the season we're playing him because he could be riding the bench with Justin Fields uh, taking his place. And uh, it, it's just hard to say with his roster rebuilding. Obviously, we have Sean Payton, and he helped, he squeezed as much as he could out of this lemon of a team. Uh, yeah, I, I prefer to not talk about Russell Wilson ever again, but it's going to happen up until, uh, you know, we, we either win or lose whatever, but even if Russell does beat us, that's, that's not going to save his career. That's not going to save his job. Great. You, you defeated the rebuilding Broncos. Congratulations. Now, uh, you had the expectations Super Bowl for him. Yeah, that's just it. Well, you look at like what happened with the Jets last year, right? And we all thought that for whatever reason, whenever a team comes on HBO Hard Knocks, instead of looking at that team like 
they're pathetic because they are. We tend, we being everybody that watches it, we tend to prop this team up and it, pair that with Aaron Rodgers coming to New York. I mean, there were a lot of expectations and it fizzled out. That could ultimately happen with Pittsburgh. You're exactly right, Dylan. I mean, they don't know what team threes bring into the party yet. And, and that's a distraction. It's, it's a mess. It's been a mess in two separate cities on two of the NFL's 32 teams. Now you're telling me the third time's a charm. No, two out of three, 66%. Russ is probably the issue. Now, it doesn't mean he can't play games. It's just I don't want him to be my quarterback anymore. The Broncos and the Steelers, they're going to lock horns, so to speak, and I want the Broncos to beat that ass. Daniel Yost coming in. Good evening, MHH, Dylan, Luke, and Broncos country. What are your thoughts on the Broncos drafting up and taking J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, or possibly Drake May, and why? Hashtag MHH for life. Thanks for joining the show, Daniel. Uh... Well, I, I've got concerns because my top two quarterbacks have always been Jaden Daniels and J.J. McCarthy. Now, I'm not sure that they're going to be within striking distance. You got to get to five. You got to get to four. You got to get somewhere real close, Dylan, if you want to be within striking distance. Here's why I'm concerned. The Broncos have Michael Penix Jr. in yesterday. Is he the backup plan or, or Bo Nix? Is he the like I know kind of an embarrassment of riches if you're the Broncos talking about backup plans and first round quarterbacks, but a left-handed quarterback that's been injury riddled. I'm, I'm out. I would trade up for Jaden Daniels. I would trade up for JJ McCarthy. What say you Dylan? Yeah, I, both of those guys uh, would definitely be worth a move up for me, but it's just, uh, I think with the Vikings getting that other first round pick, they almost, I don't want to say a hundred percent, but they almost certainly, taking us out of the running for that. And that might mm. be for the best, maybe just move on already, but we never know how these drafts are going to shake out. We don't know who's going to fall or whatever. Personally, I'm a big Drake may guy. I know there's been some discourse in, in this chat, especially, but, Oh, well he's inaccurate here or, you know, his footwork's not so great. Those, a lot of that's coachable. And that's a lot of things I heard about mm -hmm. a, a certain quarterback from Buffalo <laughs> when he was coming out. But, uh, yeah, it's everyone's got their preference, but those JJ and Drake May in particular, I, I, I like a ton. And yeah, I like Drake May too. I'd be happy with Drake May. Now, if Michael Penix Jr. got drafted to the Broncos, I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't be a little disappointed, but I'd be very curious at the same time. I'd be like, I, I, I'm not going to say it's the mistake because you don't know. I just, he's not my favorite quarterback. Mm -hmm. I'm, drafting a first round quarterback seems like the only option. Right. It seems like the only option for the Broncos, at least from a fan basis perspective, if you do not draft a quarterback and I love that you call him Gucci Danucci, you got Gucci Danucci. <laughs> I had to write that one down. I'm stealing it. Gucci Danucci. <laughs> and then your incumbent in Jarrett Stidham. Then what? You're going to sign Ryan Tannehill for a one year, five million dollar deal. That that going to sell jerseys. Is that going to get you a new stadium in the next five years? No. Uh you willing to bet all your all the house money that sh that the Penners, the Walton Penners, still are putting into this team despite the team losing <laughs> seven consecutive seasons? Are you going to put all those chips in on getting Shador Sanders next year in twenty twenty five? I don't think so. Right, we're kind of already putting the Cowboys connection together there down there in Jerry World. Um, Prime's already said he wouldn't play play for specific teams. Look, you got to get a quarterback this year. You absolutely have to. It's going to cost more than it should. You're going to have to say goodbye to Pat Sertan. You're probably going to have to say goodbye to Garrett Bowles and maybe even Cortland Sutton. Dylan, I'm worried about Cortland Sutton's worth. You know why I'm worried about his worth? Because Stephon Diggs was traded to the Houston Texans for peanuts today, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I think we saw that he was quite frustrated the past even past couple seasons you know uh the inconsistencies of the bills in the playoffs we've heard that before uh through their history and uh but you know it, stefan diggs is a big personality and i i felt like it was almost inevitable that he got moved i didn't think it would be before the draft but uh now the bills have a more clear direction where they might go hey maybe maybe they want to trade up to 12 to take a brian thomas or maybe a top mm. receiver there if if a trade back is something the Broncos are interested in. Um, but, yeah, that, that, that could definitely affect Cortland Sutton's worth because obviously us in Broncos country know how good he is. But when the the name Stefan Diggs is just a lot more well-known. 
And to see him go for, uh, I believe, what was it? So, 2025 second round pick, I believe. Oh yeah, and, so a pick next year, yeah. And and maybe a conditionals in there. And I think I think Houston even got a pick back. Huh. Yeah, so, so it, it's weird. So uh, yeah, it looks like right now, just looking at the official NFL um Twitter, it looks like Stefan Diggs dealt to the Houston Texans in exchange for 2025 second round pick. Man, a second round pick for a Stefan Diggs. What's that get you for Cortland Sutton? A, a fifth? I mean, what did you get a fifth for Jerry Judy? A sixth for like I didn't. I don't even remember what they got for Jerry Judy. Why? Because I was just willing to get rid of him. I mean, yep. Cortland Sutton is arguably having one of his most dynamic seasons, right? I mean, he came down with some of the most sick touchdown catches we saw in the 2023 season. Didn't equate to a ton of Broncos wins, but if you're Cortland Sutton. Yes, you should be able to go to a team and compete. However, if you're that team thinking about kicking the tires on Cortland Sutton, you're not going to give up a lot for him. He's just going to be a nice piece of capital, maybe some icing on the cake, if you will, on a draft day trade. Especially with how stacked this wide receiver class is. And it seems every year it's getting better and better. And you might as well take a guy or two every year. That's just it. Well, and people are wondering, is that is is that what Buffalo's getting ready to do right now? I mean, it's just, it's one of these things. Mike E, he is Mike E, and he gets respect. What's up? Hey, Luke and Dylan, did you guys see Stink making fun of Russell's weight room sunglasses? No, I didn't. <laughs> Hilarious. I'm with you, Luke. Stink making fun of somebody? He would never. Uh, I follow Mark Schlereth. I, he's a good dude, man. He's He's been very good to me and my come up and my time. Good to my family. Uh, I love what stink does over on X man. Cause stink just puts people to task and whether you love him, you hate him. You're entertained by it. The guy knows ball. I didn't see this Dylan. Did you see this, this bit about Russell's weight room sunglasses? Uh, no, I did not. And thank you, Mike, for the super chat. Uh, yeah, Mark, Mark's <laughs> definitely a, a straight shooter. I guess you'd call him. He's a, he definitely doesn't mince words, especially when it comes to Russell Wilson, whether he's, uh, on the radio, you know, I see clips of him on Twitter or if he's on the, the coward show or whatever, he's <laughs> he's he uh, really putting it to him, man. <laughs> he goes ham, man. My, well, the ultimate mic drop when you're Mark Schlereth, as Mikey knows, is just when he gets those Super Bowl rings out, man. All right. Those mm -hmm. three Super Bowl rings, one with Washington and those hogs. But yeah, uh, Mike, I still so probably the only thing I haven't seen Mark Schlereth make fun of somebody for. He was going to task on Cleveland Browns fans today and. Um, the guy knows so much about football, man. It's one of those things. If you're ever, you ever get a chance, I, I would say, instead of asking for his autograph, which he'll totally sign, ask him a question, ask him about football, just see what that answer is. Cause anytime I'm around him, man, I, I usually try to have a notepad because the guy knows the game so incredibly well at these different levels. And when you could try to absorb just some of it, it's good. If you can't, Go for the entertainment factor, at least over on social media. If you'd like to reach out to us on social media, please do so. Dylan's at Dylan Von Arks, MHH. Yours truly at Luke Patterson, LP. You can reach out to the mothership on Twitter at Mile High Huddle. And we need to get our numbers up a little bit on this MHI underscore pod. Head on over. Give us a follow. We appreciate the thousands of downloads and views that we get every week. But let's beef some of those numbers up. Speaking of beefing up, I got the beefcake with me, baby. DVA. A is filling in for Thomas Hall on MHI. I am Luke Patterson. We appreciate you guys rocking with us. We are reacting to the news. Michael Penix Jr. spent Tuesday in the Mile High City with Coach Sean Payton and the Broncos staff. Man, let's say you're Sean Payton and you've got two of your guys. It's Drake May and Jaden Daniels. Who are your backups, Dylan? Because I think for a lot of people, they're on the Bo Nix is dropping train, right? They could see that happening. Well, anytime someone thinks they can get something of value, they usually go out and try to grab it. Look at those Stanleys, right? During Valentine's Day, my daughter had to have a stand. <laughs> Good Lord. It's just a, the same Yeti cup that I have here, but with a handle. But if, if you get a bunch of teams thinking one thing, maybe someone goes up and reaches for a Bo Nix. Who, who are your backups? You like Drake May? Give me a number two. You like J.J. McCarthy, it sounds like, too. Uh -huh. Yeah, right, give yeah. me. Give me your backups. I'm not going to hold you to it, but mm. you know this fan base needs a quarterback. Your two favorites are gone. Are you still thinking about it? Yeah, it's just I guess it would depend where because I've said plenty on OBV. My thoughts on uh, Bo Nix. You know, I like him. I don't love him. 
uh, taking him at 12 is a little too rich for me. And uh, I mean, so, but I, I, I could see him working in the system for sure. So it would be probably Bo Nix. And then I, I kind of like something about Spencer Rattler. I think he's got all yeah. the arms out in the world. Yeah. I, I, I know he's cleaned up some of his character stuff. I, I'm sure being in South Carolina with no uh, offensive line really humbled him. Uh, yeah. But I've only heard good things about him turning around his character. And I see pull up that comment. Actually, Riley Leonard is someone I'm looking at next year. If for Ooh. some reason uh, the Broncos don't get their guy this year. No, that is interesting. Well, and then uh, you got to think of the guy too. Um, what is it? The t- Michael Pratt, Tulane, Toledo. I'm mixing oh, those Tulane, two up real yeah. quick. Tulane, yeah. Cecil came on during the senior bowl, said, look, man, I think the Broncos really like this kid a lot too. Um, maybe you take two. Maybe you try to, I don't know, man, right? You don't have a ton of draft capital. I'm with you on Bo Nix. I like Bo Nix. I don't love him. 12 seems a little rich to me, but you know what? That's kind of the quarterback position. If that's what you're stuck with, man, I, I, I it's tough, right? Because you do need offensive linemen. I can hear Thomas yelling at me from somewhere in the car right now. <laughs> You've got to build up the offensive line, Luke. It doesn't matter if they don't have an O-line. And if you're sitting at 12, all the quarterbacks are gone. You couldn't get a deal done. You don't want to cut off your nose to spite your face. Mikey coming back in. Thanks, Mike Edel. Uh, was on his podcast, Stinks Podcast, The Stink of Truth. I love you guys. Go Broncos. <laughs> Head on over to The Stink and Truth, guys, and let's uh, pile on Russell Wilson and his goofy sunglasses. Now, that's awesome, man. Stink and Truth's good. Evans is another good dude, man. He's been really good to me and my come up. And uh, those guys, man, if you're looking for a morning show, listen to their morning show on the Denver Radio Airway. It's funny, right? Like, uh, my daughters listened to it growing up like this. I make fun of my wife and my mom for listening to like the girls radio, you know, but it's not that different when you really start to think about it. Right. We talk celebrity news. We talk all kinds of stuff. It's MHI. Let's talk a little bit about the new un- new uniforms, Dylan. April 22nd, the Broncos are going to drop some new threads. What are we thinking? Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to be disappointed because it's not royal blue, but. You know, I, I'm just a little, a little worried because uh, when uh, Damani Leach at the the what was it the league meeting was talking about the uniforms and he said, you know, same colors, same logo, all new uniform. I was like, okay, well now I'm worried because I mean, I, I I like you know the logo is fine at least yeah. to me. It's kind of like what I've described as fake futuristic, like what okay. people when this logo was made thought it would you know, things would look in the future, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And what really worries me is that I feel like this logo only works with the current uniforms. And I'm worried to see what they might do with it. It's Mm. just, I'm not entirely sure. Like I said, I'm more partial to the, the Royal blue and orange rather than the Navy blue. You know, you bring up some good points and, and you're a lot like Thomas in the fact that you're a reasonable man. Dylan and I'm not a reasonable man. So here's why I've got a problem with it. I'm nostalgic, right? I'm a little bit nostalgic. So this is kind of a big change for the Denver Broncos. This is one of those big changes. One of those first big changes, if you will, since Mr. Boland passed away. Right. So I'm kind of, you can't just, you can't hang on to stuff and not move on. Right. You you eventually Mm -hmm. have to move forward and progress, but, um, I'm, I'm trying to have some hope because so far the Walton Penner ownership group, I think they've done an exceptional job as being owners of this franchise. They are sinking a ton of resources, a ton of money, a ton of energy into this franchise. They're out and about, not only in the state of Colorado, in the city of Denver, they're all over the U S they've got great public relations. They want to improve the fan experience and have spent billions of dollars doing so. I want to have faith that they're going to, pay homage in a way to the Broncos history. That's what you got to do if you're in any NFL franchise and you're considering some of these uniform changes. But you're right, Dylan. I'm nervous too. We, we've we seen some disastrous opening day logos, whatever you want to call them, where the quarterback goes out there on the runway, kind of does a spin, and everybody's like, dang, I don't know about that one. Maybe we got to try again in four years. But none of it's going to matter if you don't have a first-round QB. Yeah, that's exactly right, man. (laughs) Todd's coming. Well, hey, you know what? And I've seen a few of them out there on X, and I'm sure you have too, Dylan. Mm -hmm. 
Broncos country, right? You guys are great at that AI stuff, man. I don't know how these kids do AI and stuff, Dylan. It's amazing. When Back in our day, right, we would just Photoshop the same jersey. I still have pictures of Peyton Manning, right? What would it look like if Peyton Manning in an orange and blue? Um, it's crazy. Todd Ostendorf coming in. We should make our uniforms like the college Broncos. Boise State, huh? Maybe pay a little homage to our uh, fellow college team name i don't know it's gonna be it's gonna be curious the snow capped i was okay with it because i like the white helmet mm -hmm. um but i thought it was a little underwhelming if i'm gonna be honest it's it's a I fine alternate yeah it's a fine alternate it beats the color rush i i'm not yeah, a big fan the traffic of the color cones rush. yeah <laughs> The traffic cones, well, and I don't think anything was bad as the brown and yellows, right? In 2009, 2010, Josh McDaniels area, era, yeah. if I remember. I mean, my Lord. You know the story about those, right? Uh, I How they came the to be in franchise history. So back when the Broncos were first created, I wish Tom was on, right? Because he'd even have the he, day, the yeah. day and the year ready. But uh, he'd, proud of, he'd be proud of me for knowing this. So. Back when the Broncos were first formed, they didn't have a penny, two pennies to run together, so rub together. So they actually got the practice squad from the University of Wyoming Cowboys, which is why they were brown and yellow. So that That's kind of explains guess. those two ugly color schemes. And I love me my Cowboys. I love the Cowboys, but good lord, some of those colors, man. Yeah. I get a I little a little gnarly. Let's give some shout outs, man. Right before we gave, came on to this show, Dylan, I found out Chauncey Billups, the king of Park Hill is being inducted into the basketball hall of fame, man. I know we're a football show, but Broncos country knows who Chauncey Billups is, man. Um, super pumped to have the King of Park Hill head into the hall. Yeah, man. Always is whenever we can get some more Denver legends in the hall. That's a good day. Well, he's connected to the NFL. He's Lindell White's cousin, believe it or not. He's the older cousin of Lindell White, Lindell White, Played for the voice of the Denver Broncos, my old head coach, Dave Logan, right? So it all kind of mm -hmm. comes full circle here in the Mile High City. But Chauncey Billups, man, it was cool to watch him play. Um, I like cursed the Nuggets when they traded him back in the day to the New York Knicks <laughs> with Mello. He was part of the, the Mello fallout. And it, it's funny because now that the Nuggets have won a championship, Joker's been back-to-back -back MVP. Um, he's kind of diminishing everything that Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony has done. And it's playoff season, man. It's, it's, we're right around the corner. Nuggets are going to be out there in the playoffs again. We're going to see Sean Payton courtside, just like we did last year. We're going to see, mm -hmm. who knows, maybe Marvin Mims courtside, some of our new Broncos courtside. It makes me wonder if we're going to see a first-round rookie QB courtside in the playoffs. How cool would that be, Broncos country? You, just, you draft a first-round quarterback. I don't care who it is. Your favorite quarterback is in the Mile High City. He's watching the Denver Nuggets with Coach Sean Payton. He's throwing the football at the game with, oh, I don't know, Peyton Manning, a guy who likes to go to the Nuggets games too. How cool would that be, Dylan? That'd be awesome, man. And, you know, if we can't get a first-round quarterback, we could always steal Yoke, you know. Might as well. <laughs> Did you see that lob? There's a lob going out there. I mean, it, Lob City is kind of what this guy does, dude. And it's just like a full-court lob. And and it, it's incredible what that kind of guy can do. And you, that's what the Broncos need. They need some sort of incredible talent. But they also need the ultimate team guy. They need the guy that's, be, that's willing to um, be molded. It's going to be tough for a rookie quarterback to come in, Dylan, especially if they're drafted in the first round and, and work with Sean Payton. Um, Sean Payton, I don't think he's a guy that pulls his punches. No, not at all. He's so, uh, yeah. Buckle up, Buttercup. You better be tough and you better be ready to go. Um, kind of makes you wonder what it's like if you were a fly in the wall on Tuesday at Denver HQ when Michael Penix Jr. is there. I mean, it, I like to envision like Gruden's grinder. Right, where you've got yes. one of these quarterback prospects up at the grease board and coaches yelling at them and asking them, Why did you do that? And these kinds of things. That's what I like to envision, whether or not that actually happens. I don't know. DTR coming back in. We really appreciate the support. If you have enough time to grab my last super, I'm curious of both of your opinion. Of course, DTR, we always have time. I apologize. Let me roll on up here. DTR. Oh, here we go, baby. I'm sorry. What does the draft compensation look like in the event that Pat Sertan was used to move into the top five? If Denver trades the 12th pick with him, could they get another first and second with the top five? I I'm of the opinion Pat Sertan's gone, and I'm okay with that. He was 
one of my favorite picks. He helps get you to the price point. Us in Broncos country, we think that should be enough. We think Pat Sertan, Cortland Sutton, Garrett Bowles, and a first-round pick should be enough. The fact of the matter is it's not enough because other teams are going to be willing to give up a lot more draft picks. The Broncos don't have a ton of draft picks to give up. They're trying to play a little bit more with the with the capital in terms of players. Which guys can we move on from? The problem with that, Dylan, is you know there aren't many players that – a lot of teams are calling on for the Denver Broncos right now. What, two, three? Justin Simmons, still a free agent out there today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's hard to say. I mean, w- what team are you moving up with? Obviously, I, I think the Chargers are out of the question. But So you're, you're looking at probably the, the Patriots and the Cardinals. Cardinals, yep. And, you know, I know there's been a lot of rumors of the Cardinals moving down, and they very well might, but – uh, it, you know, they traded down last year. At, at some point, you got to start making those picks to build up a team. You know what I mean? And but hey, maybe a Patrick Sertan, maybe that's that's enough for uh, uh, to help us move up. Obviously, it's gonna be Pat Sertan and a first, maybe two first. Who knows? It's it's when you're going up to four, I know they have the valuation chart and whatnot, but when they know you're coming up for a quarterback, they gouge you a little more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, 100. They've got you by the short hairs. I, I mean, and everybody knows that the Broncos need one. I mean, the Broncos need one. Everybody's saying it. All the signals are pointing to them doing it. Tom comes on every week and reminds me. Tom, Sean Payton loves to trade up in the first round. History shows that he goes up. He doesn't just stay pat. He doesn't move back. If he's going anywhere, he's moving up. Uh, what does that look like, DTR? Man, it's so hard to say. I hate to hedge my bet like that, but I just I don't know. I just don't know. I'm not going to go on there. I could go on to the MHH airwaves. I can go on to the Denver radio airwaves, right? I could say per source over on social media and pretend like I know. I don't know, so I'm not going to lie and say that I know. I think that two first-round picks and Pat Sertan throw Cortland Sutton in the mix and maybe a second, that's probably as much as I'm willing to do to try to get to – five within the top five i think that's four that's that's probably it for me two ones ps2 whoever else you want and a two i i think that's i gotta draw my line in the sand there or at least have my backup plan in case a quarterback like bo nicks or michael Penix jr falls to me at number 12 overall so i just saw this funny comment early and i was Talking about this with Ron actually after we uh, <laughs> All right. uh went off the air. Uh so I was I was talking to him about, you know, I can't remember who it was. I, it was a Facebook chatter that was talking about how I have this resemblance to a uh, a lovely quarterback by the name of Paxton Lynch. <laughs> and uh Okay. Uh... Yeah, uh, it's a pen, like sometimes you know I'll like kind of leave the goatee more so it sticks out a little more and then my hair I have a hat on today. For obvious right. reasons, much too long right now. But I was telling uh, Ron, maybe depending on the Broncos pick, I said because there's a lot of people in here who want Bonex at 12. I'm not sure that's the pick. But if they take Bonex at 12, maybe I, I shave down to that Paxton goatee and I get my hair. You know how he does it and whatnot, and maybe scalp a 12 jersey from somewhere. I don't think you're going to be able to. I'll have to get a custom one, and I'm sure not yeah. paying a lot of money. For a Paxton jersey. <laughs> no, maybe you could find one from somebody on Craigslist or something like that. Well, and, you know, like, if you want to be like Paxton Lynch, all you got to do is fire up the Xbox, and you're pretty much there. Um, <laughs> no, that's funny, man. I did see that one in there, too. Broncos country, man, they're they're good, man. We give we give each other some, uh, some curveballs on this show, just like we do on Saturday nights. It's Wednesday night. It's MHI. He is Dylan Von Arks. I am Luke Patterson. We appreciate you guys rocking with us again. Head on over to milehighhuddle.com. Check out Dylan's got an article up right now. Russell Wilson revenge game in Denver. Extra, extra. Read all about it. Again, that's milehighhuddle.com. I've got an article up right now. NFL Network. They're suggesting, well, the Broncos, they need to trade up the most out of all 32 teams. They have the worst quarterback situation. You can read about that over at milehighhuddle.com. If you'd like to reach out to DVA or yours truly, please DM us. Slide into our DMs at Dylan Von Arks, MHH, yours truly, at Luke Patterson, LP. We are kicking it off to you guys. What do you think, Broncos country? Michael Penix Jr. 
I've talked a lot about the cons, Dylan. Let's try to talk about some pros, right? He's left-handed, those two ACL tears, surgery on each shoulder, some work ethic concerns. Maybe he needs to get in the weight room. He gets rid of the ball pretty damn quick. Watch some film of him today, man, and I do like his decision-making. I do like his processing, uh, but he leaves a lot to be desired for me. I, I'm out. I'm out on Michael Penix Jr. I, I, I think at 12, if it's him and Bo Nix, <laughs> I go Bo Nix. I think, I think I really do. I think I go Bo Nix just because of the injury history and the fact that Michael Penix Jr. is a left-handed quarterback it scares me a lot. Yeah. I, th there's some things to like about Penix for sure. Not enough for me to take him at 12. Like you said, I'd rather roll the dice on a Bo Nix. Uh, you know, he's got a good arm. He's got a, gets a, a real good spin on that ball. But like I mentioned before, uh, under pressure and at, plays outside of the pocket just leaves a little too much to be desired there that's just it man well and he's fast too a lot of people don't mm -hmm. think that he's quick I, he gets a bad rap for that because like you said i mean he had a loaded washington team too right so well, when you've got a very competitive team that's competing for the national championship you're loaded you don't always need to go run around he ran a four five forty at his pro day he's plenty quick mm -hmm. um it's it's not about the speed for me it's how well are your knees and ankles and shoulders going to hold up when they're getting smashed, when they're getting ground into the, into just fine powder. I think of Pat Mahomes out there on one ankle. I mean, can you do that? Michael Penn? I know I'm asking a lot, not a lot of human beings can do that. Right. I, that's, that's, I don't know. Michael Jordan flu game ish. Right. We were you weren't. I don't even think in this world. I was Maybe just a baby at that time, so I didn't fully understand it. But that's that kind of level. Right. Of, of just greatness transcended. And I know everybody wants the next pack of home. It's unrealistic to ask if Michael Penix Jr. is going to be that. But the availability thing is huge. We draft a first round quarterback who's got an injury history, gets hurt in training camp. That story writes itself. Yeah, man. Like we we've had enough ACL injuries in the in training camp. Thinking that you know Tim Patrick back to back years, and I mean it seems like our injury luck is mostly turned the corner. I knock on wood, but yeah, yeah. It it just worries me, man. I mean one one good hit, and that that could be you call it a career. Even who knows? I mean just just with how he's like Frankenstein out there at this point. A monster, an absolute monster. Zach's been very active in the chat as always. Wanted to make sure we're giving him some shout out. Thank you for joining DVA and yours truly. Look at Joe Burrow's injury history in the NFL. He has to be the most overrated quarterback. Zach, I ask you this because everyone is entitled to have their own opinion. If the Cincinnati Bengals put Joe Burrow on the trading block, would you pick up the phone, Zach? Because I wouldn't a heartbeat for a Joey B. Uh, Uncle Joey, he is... I get it. He's the injury history. This is the same guy, right? I'm clowning Michael Penix Jr. for an injury history, and then you look at what's going on with Joe Burrow. I think Joe Burrow is the type of quarterback because his internal processor, a.k.a. his brain, I'm talking about how smart he is. I'm talking about the decisions and how quickly he can make them in his reads on the field. I think that transcends whatever setbacks an injury could 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 give him I, I, that's that punishment's coming now it's coming a little bit more as you get older right it's coming it's adding a little bit more as these injuries tack on but ultimately a joey b man i'd take him in denver in a heartbeat him and michael Penix jr were not the same quarterbacks coming out of college joe burrow is considered the best quarterback to come out of college that argument's out there from ask nick kendall Right, Nick Kendall. Nobody watches more college football than Nick Kendall. At Nick Kendall, MHH, my guy. Go ask him who the greatest college quarterback was. I bet you Joe Burrow's name probably comes up. Yeah, um, he, he's been a great quarterback in this league so far, obviously. You know, got to a Super Bowl. I, I'm not sure I'd call that overrated. Uh, I mean, in terms of injuries, yeah, you're right. He, he's sustained a few uh, since he's been in the league, you know, his rookie season and his past season with the wrist. And But, yeah, I, I – It'd be hard pressed to say overrated. I mean, like you said, if if Cincinnati's trying to trade him here, I, I'm picking up the phone, man. And yeah. especially with Sean Payton coaching him, like it over and done with. Well, and to your point in the overrated and having this conversation, Dylan, I think of our guy Josh Allen. 
right? Our guy, my guy, your, I, I think you liked Josh coming out of college, right? I mean, who didn't? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm a Wyoming fan. I was a Wyoming fan before Josh got there. I'm a Wyoming fan after he's, I like Josh. I want him to do well. I've been very disappointed. In Josh Allen the last couple of years, especially in the postseason. I don't care what you do in the regular season. Go be Dak Prescott, right? If that's what you want to do, then go do it and do it well. Uh, I, win some divisional games, win some conference games. I mean that Josh Allen is Josh Allen an overrated quarterback. I would, I would go there before I get after a Joey B and you're exactly right. You get to a super bowl. That's, that's an accomplishment. It's not the accomplishment, but you got a little bit closer. We're about to find out how good Josh Allen really is. I'm surprised the bills have let Sean McDermott hang around as long as he has. I mean, it looks like Dylan, they're on a total rebuild tearing down the roster and, and trying to make the best of a new situation. It boggles my mind that they're not doing it with a new head coach. Just start over. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel about, uh, and I'm not a big Justin Fields guy. I just want to, I want to get that out there. Cause Me I, too. you know, uh, I, I don't think uh, hiring Matt Eberflus was going to help him in any way. <laughs> I mean, you no. got this young quarterback in the bears like, you know, what we need, we need a defensive coach. Yeah, that'll do it. And it's just it's kind of the same thing uh, with Josh Allen. Like, obviously, they've made the playoffs uh, majority of the seasons that Josh has been there, but it's not because of the defense. <laughs> and no. I, I think you need to elevate uh, uh, an offensive coordinator or j just find someone to be that head coach, and it has to be an offensive-minded guy. That's just the league is so offensive-driven, especially you're seeing – we're, we're banning all kinds of tackles now. So it's, yeah. it's oh. just, you, you're, it'd be smarter to lean more, uh, more offense. The only one I could think of, at least off the top of my head from recent memory is, uh, Mike McDonald to the Seahawks. I really like him as just a, a head coach. You know, I, I'm obviously he's a defensive guy, but there's certain guys you can fit in there as a head coaching mold. But I, I prefer to have an offensive coach like we do here in Denver. I do too. And I would prefer that we don't have a Vance Joseph. It blows my mind, Dylan, that Mike Vrabel was just sitting out there and he's what he's consulting in Cleveland. What the hell is wrong with the NFL? If Mike Vrabel is out of a job, I mean, fine. You don't want him to be your head coach. No problem. A defensive coordinator, man, sign me up now. Tom, Tom has been on me about this, and I think there's something to it. You can't have too many dynamic personalities in one room, right? Maybe that's why you don't have a Rex Ryan and a Sean Payton. Maybe that's why you don't have a Sean Payton and a Mike uh, and a Mike Vrabel. But Vance Joseph, man, it's it's been a tough sell. John Paul C coming in here. Uh, Michael Penix has also been one of the most impressive at the combine and the pro day. John Paul, that's very good, right? I, I'm. I have some disdain for Michael Penix Jr. And I don't know him, right? Seems like a nice enough guy. I haven't heard anything bad about the guy either. That's refreshing, right? Sometimes there's a bunch of distractions. And does he love football? Is he a punk? What's the deal with his dad? <coughs> Caleb Williams. Uh, those kind of things. That's not the case with Michael Penix Jr. It's just the injury history. It's just that he's left-handed. However, he's been putting on a show. He's been adding to his draft stock. It, it's making some teams think twice. And... Uh, I would be very disappointed, even though he's not my favorite quarterback, if the Broncos didn't at least do their diligence on him. Do due diligence, rather, like you mentioned earlier. You've got to be willing to look at these guys. Who knows? Quarterbacks get missed every single year, Dylan. Maybe maybe I'm just missing Michael Penix. It wouldn't be the first time I missed on a first-round quarterback, and it certainly won't be the last. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no one gets that right, man. It, GMs hardly get the QB pick, right? It, if that weren't the case, uh, all 32 teams would have their guy already. And uh, it, it's just, it's it's a hard process. I know everyone gets on LA for not finding his guy. Well, he found Peyton Manning. He brought him here. And yeah, he couldn't draft him. I, I like Paxton Lynch coming out. He seemed like a, a fun prospect, but like, I was happy. I was happy. Yeah. I was like, uh, you know, when Big Al's like, yeah, Paxton, you're our guy, baby. I was right there. I'm like, yeah, Big and Al's excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Hell and, yeah. And Paxton seemed to care too. You know, he was crying when he got drafted. It's like, oh, okay, awesome. And, but, you know, he like, but then he was crying in Tampa Bay. And then he was crying when Emmanuel Sanders was, was yelling at him. And... He was crying at the, uh, it was against the Raiders. I was at that game when he got benched for uh, Trevor Simeon. 
Oh he, my guy, that was one of my guys I hit on, right? He's still you say what you want about Trevor. He's still bouncing around. Trev's still still out there. I don't know. Maybe then Broncos need a reunion. <laughs> they don't need a reunion. Uh no, I was the guy that was overreacting. So you like Paxton, right? I was happy. I was happy with Paxton. He wasn't a guy I thought they would get, but I was thrilled. John LA picked a, a first round quarterback. Um, but Trevor, when when he started coming in and and um exceeding expectations the very low expectations that we had for him i was pumped right after that dallas cowboys game I was, sign him sign him let's lock him down to a team friendly <laughs> deal thank god that the broncos didn't do that man because yeah, yeah. it's tough dude and it's it's fun when you're on social media and you do a good job of it too man you do a better job because you're more of a gentleman than i am but <laughs> I, I love to try to go back one of my favorite like accounts is the freezing cold takes mm -hmm. account mm -hmm. and uh, i don't i'm sure i've made that uh, I'm, I'm sure some folks that you know have made that um but we're all wrong on this stuff and instead of trying to hide from it or lie about it just have fun with it man because this is entertainment this is sports this is why we are here kb i was thinking about you just a second ago when i gave chauncey billups our guy a shout out uh park hill king heading into the hall would you consider trading the bills the broncos pick number 12 they could get their number one receiver and we could stay in the first and gain more draft wow that's a fascinating question dylan i like where ken is is uh is headed here buffalo needs a receiver the receiver that they love is sitting there the broncos think they can get bo nicks at the end of the first maybe even the top of the second do you take that phone call I, you, you kind of have to. I mean, the Broncos are in a position with limited, very limited draft capital. Not and... unlimited? No. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. No. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, moving down isn't the worst idea, especially, say, if a Knicks is sitting there or a Penix is sitting at 12 and Peyton moves down, that means he didn't love that guy. And that's, mm. you know, and – you're right. And it's just we maybe we need more draft capital. Maybe we wait to take a Knicks or Penix if they're still there in the second, a Rattler, Pratt, whoever the hell's there later on and you know, just try and get more draft capital because there's a lot of holes on this team. There is. You're right to say that, and I like to ignore it, Dylan. I, I like to ignore it. I like to think that our D-line is good to go. I like to think that we have edge rushers in the chamber just ready to spit out and have monster seasons. I like to think that we didn't lose starting linebacker, starting safety, you, you know, like center. Start yeah, starting center, right? What's going on with Ben Powers? Are we going to rebound? What's going on with Garrett Bowles? Are we still going to hang on to this cat? I mean, man. There is a lot. The wide receiver room, very young, very unproven, mm -hmm. very unheralded. Um, I'm excited. Don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. no, KB, I, I like where you're at here, man, because let's say they're go. Let's say the wide receivers, there's a run on wide receivers. And by run, a, a run, I mean one <laughs> or two, because there's some fantastic wide receivers here in the first round. Um, I think here's what I think, Ken. George Payton considers this. So Sean doesn't have to. George would do this in a heartbeat. We all know that. George loves to stockpile picks. He loves to draft cornerbacks, um, and he'd be the first to tell you. I think that's George's role right now. Be the safety net. Be yourself. Maybe that's why Sean keeps George here. George is a very good scout. When it comes to making decisions, we've been hit or miss. <laughs> and, and there have been some expensive ramifications and some not-so-expensive ramifications. So maybe, Ken, this is the, the thing where you let George, if you're Sean, you let George do his thing. You do your due diligence. If you really want me to respect and consider this, tell me what I can get. Make sure it's the most. Be square with me. Be up front and present that option because Dylan's right. You have to consider it. Um, I, I would be crushed. Ken, Dylan, Broncos country. I'd be crushed if the Broncos did not land a first-round quarterback. Yeah, man. It's, it's kind of nice to have – uh, Sean Payton, you know, he's the a-hole that you love to have on your team. He's going he's gonna to be aggressive. He's going to trade trade up. But you also have George Payton, who's more uh, leans more towards trading down and get more picks. So I kind of hopefully that levels out there in the war room. Yeah, but, uh, it, it's it's an interesting time to be a Broncos fan in the in the draft. It is, man. We know who's calling the shots, too. I, mm -hmm. I mean, like, make no mistake there. Look, our guy Naj. What's up, Naj? Getting Penix will be the best move in this draft. 
if available. I love it, man. If if you like Michael Penix, just because I don't doesn't mean he's not the guy. Let us know who your guy is. It could be anybody from uh, Caleb Williams. We've seen crazy things happen. I mean, <laughs> crazier things have happened in this life than a number one pick being changed overnight, a team changing their mind, a uh, last minute trade coming in. I mean, this life that we live in in 2024 is crazy. Naj, I like that you're you're cool with it. Naj is pumped that Michael Penix Jr. was in here uh on tuesday in here in the denver hq <laughs> uh on tuesday with sean payton uh it's interesting man there's there's some news i know broncos country likes to monitor what's going on in the afc west right and during to, during my lunch break today i'm looking i'm seeing jim jim harbaugh right talking about uh quotes it's the first day of the new year it's like christmas right and i'm like yeah okay got it <laughs> then i'm then i'm looking at the chiefs right and they sign Carson Wentz, ah, eh, whatever. You guys can do whatever you want. But then I'm seeing this news about Rasheed Rice and a lamp. Was it a Lamborghini that he wrecked was, on the? It was a Corvette and Lamborghini. If I'm not mistaken, I believe he was leasing the Lamborghini, the one he wasn't even in. So, oh yeah, there's this trouble like, going on. I don't, I don't know if everybody's been under a rock or what, but Rasheed Rice, maybe it was on Easter. Got was possibly i don't want to say potentially allegedly i don't know involved in a motor vehicle accident in on a texas freeway in which him and in, him and the folks in the car fled and there was a warrant out for his arrest what's the deal with these warrants like especially with the cam sutton thing out of mm -hmm. detroit right i mean like yeah, he finally NFL... just turned himself in yeah, these NFL players have kind of had these these warrants the last couple of weeks, but the the Rasheed Rice thing, man, that was that was some bad optics, especially when you consider Coach Andy Reid, right? Big Red, best thing ever. Uh, I do know his son's sentence just got commuted as well. So mm. some messy optics for the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm sure they're going to be fine on the field, right? You've got <laughs> Pat Mahomes, but uh, some messy optics over there in Chiefs Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you saw about the uh, the city or uh, Kansas City rejecting some. I believe it was taxes to pay for the the stadium, and I know that it was the GM or president of the Chiefs was. I don't think it'll happen, but they were threatening to leave if they didn't get the city to pay for part of the stadium. The I majority. Did. I did stadium. see that and the baseball team, the Royals were involved in that too, right? Like mm -hmm. they're kind of trying to mix them together and maybe I'm wrong about this, but I was under the impression that Pat Mahomes had some ownership stake in the yes. Royals. Uh, co conflict of interest there, anybody? <laughs> I mean, I'm not a lawyer. I don't speculate on land deals or anything like that, but it's interesting, right? And when you start to look at it and we all know Arrowhead, man, one of the most famous stadiums ever in the NFL. I hate it there. <laughs> but look, the Chiefs have had a lot of success, man. They're they're wanting some new stuff, too. I mean, at a certain point, we're probably going to have to say goodbye to some of these older stadiums. I Hopefully Lambo stays Lambo forever and ever. And it probably will since the team's kind of owned by the community. But um, just some weird, messy optics, man. When you look over there at the Kansas City Chiefs and what's going on with those guys, it's just uh, got to keep your eye on them, right? Travis Kelsey out there on the Eros, Eros, whatever the hell it's called, tour with Bay. Uh, you got Pat Mahomes out there eating a bunch of ice cream sandwiches. Everybody's freaking out. <laughs> like they're going to be okay. But man, it's still been a messy week for the Kansas City Chiefs. No kidding. I, I remember too, they did those. Uh report cards for the teams or whatever you know they're like oh food and stuff and the, the ownership i believe was an f for the chiefs yeah that's the hunt and that's family. voted on by the players and and you know who did score well quite well was sean payton sean payton if memory serves got an a minus i think i wrote something about it over at milehighhuddle.com recently you can go read all about it um when does the schedule officially get dropped, Dylan? That's I was wondering about that today. I was reading Dylan's got an article up over at milehighhuddle.com talking about a potential Russell Wilson revenge game, Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Denver Broncos. Go check it out at milehighhuddle.com. But no, man, I'm reading your article, and I'm wondering, when are we going to know? Like, we know that there are new uniforms coming on April 22nd. We know if the Denver Broncos are going to draft a first round quarterback, what April 25th, that's round one Thursday night. Mm -hmm. So we know that when do we get the schedule or, or guesstimate? I, 
hopefully sometime soon after the draft. I feel like that's typically when they do it, but I, I could be wrong. I don't know. It's it, it varies year to year, but I, I just want to know so we know when we get to come meet some of y'all. Oh, the meet and greet, man. Hell yeah. We had a blast last year, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun this year. I know Chad really enjoys doing it. We all have a lot of fun, and it was cool to – cool to uh, have a few cold pops with everybody hang out with everybody's friends family you know it wasn't cool and tom and i still lament about it seeing all that damn green and yellow in that stadium that's got to change and the only way for that to change is for the broncos to win football games you want to excite this fan base you get a rookie first round qb in. i know jared stidham he's probably going to be the starter in training camp he's probably going to be the starter for the first couple of games but everybody's going to be waiting everybody's going to be wondering, then I can be patient. I can be really patient because at some point, Sean's going to throw him into the fire. Sean's not a patient person. I'm not a patient person. We're going to see a first round rookie quarterback. And when we see it, I don't want to see the opposing team anywhere near the Green Bay Packers mass amount of fans. I don't think a fan base travels better. Maybe the Steelers, Steelers and Green Bay, man. I mean, those fans. They make me sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty disheartening, but it was fun uh, chanting. Uh, well, because, you know, they got the Go Pack Go chant. Uh, I, at least in my section, we're chanting Go Back Home. So that Ooh. was pretty fun. There you go. Uh, yeah. Send them back, back to Cheese Land. Yeah, yeah. Pack that. Well, and hey, you know, it was, uh, it was scary there for a little bit. KB coming back in. Dylan, what would it cost? For the Bills to move up 16 picks. We're talking about the Broncos trying to move what from 12 to 5, top of my head, between eight and nine picks. If they can get in that round, maybe they get a guy that they like. What's the price to move up 16 picks? Is that you got to involve some players too? If you're Buffalo, I know you don't have a lot of guys left, but maybe if you're the Broncos, Ken, maybe I'm looking at their offensive line a little bit. Now, Spencer Brown, I would love to have him here. Mike McGlinchey, we'll figure it out. Can you play guard? You, you can't move it all anyway. Maybe we just, I don't know. I don't know, Dylan. I don't know. This is going to be rich, though. I, Damn you, Ken, for making me consider this. What would it cost for the Bills to move up 16 picks? God, it'd, it'd be a boatload for sure. And, I mean, they don't got any wide receivers to give away now. But two, uh, two one, uh, two ones, a tight. Do they still have Dawson Knox? I mean, mm -hmm. like, I'm tr I'm trying to like because they went Dalton Kincaid, right? That's obviously the future there. Broncos need a tight end. Ken, would you be interested in a, Dal a, a Dawson Knox two firsts? Then I'd take it. I mean, if you're gonna give me two firsts and I'm Denver, Dawson Knox and maybe an offensive lineman, man, I, get I think that. I could. I think I could get Bo Nix then. Maybe I could. And if I am afraid of the Raiders getting him or somebody else, maybe I trade back. Maybe we see that. Why are we just limiting ourselves? I like I like where Ken's head's at, man, because he's trying to consider all possibilities just like you are. For some reason, Dylan, I get it locked into my head that if the Broncos do trade down, that means they can't trade back up. That's not the case. If Sean, man, wants to make a move. He's going to make a move. Look at what he did for Marvin Mims. We were shocked. Last year, all Broncos country, when Marvin Mims was drafted by the Broncos. Sean Payton's pick. Mm -hmm. Same with Riley Moss, too. They they traded up for him as well. And hopefully we get to see him out on the field some more this this year because you trade up for a guy like that, hopefully you'd like to see him on the field. Yeah, I like him. I liked the little bit that I saw him this summer, man. He's yeah, I know he comes from good stocks. He's got a good family. And Nick Kendall loves him, right? One of those damn Hawkeyes. And uh, good luck, dude. I'm going to cheer a cheer for Iowa, dude, because mm -hmm. I, I like what Caitlin Clark is doing, man, having a daughter. Um, I think it's so important right now in 2024 that we support women and women's sports in general. Um not going to go any further than that, but I'm going to be going for Caitlin Clark for sure. It's cool, man. That LSU Iowa game. I, I haven't seen anything like it, man, to see this, this type of renewed energy in, in women's sports. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, man, what a quick hour. That's We're up against it here, man. Broncos country. You've absolutely been killing it. I want to say a big heartfelt thank you to Dylan who generously joined us on MHI last minute. I texted him last minute, Dylan, I need you tonight. No problem. I got you. And if you didn't get enough of Dylan tonight, head on over to milehighhuddle.com. He's always got articles, three, four, five articles a week coming up. We've got one on the Russell Wilson revenge game right now. 
Read about that over at milehighhuddle.com. I've got one up. NFL Network says the Broncos have the worst quarterback situation in the league. Check that out. If you didn't get enough of Dylan on these airwaves, he will be back on Saturday night with Ron White on OBV. You guys can catch these guys every Saturday at 6 p.m. Mountain, bringing you your Broncos prime time action. If you'd like to reach out to yours truly, that's at Luke Patterson LP over on X. If you'd like to reach out to Dylan, that's at Dylan Von Arks MHH. Please give us a follow at MHI underscore pod. If you'd like to head on over to the mothership, that's at Mile High Huddle. If you want to get your merch on, that's MHHmerch.com. Get your swag on. It's spring. Make sure you've got your drip. Dylan, this was a fun show, man. I really, really appreciate it. We're going to get some more of these in. Maybe I'll uh, take over your Saturday show if one of you guys needs here in the near future. But I really, really appreciate it, man. Thanks for chalking it up with me. Of course, man. It's good to see, you know, lively chat as always and keep the conversation going and a lot of thought provoking questions. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you on Saturdays. <laughs> Boom. Broncos country, man. Here we go. A first round quarterback. This is the way. This is the way.